when we open VizMiner, and we do this by clicking on the VizMiner, either the icon that we've put in the toolbar or if we put VizMiner over here with, in our programs, when we click on it, it actually does more than start one program. It actually starts two automatically. There's a slave that actually waits and listens for jobs that we give it in terms of doing visualizations and charts. And then there's also the control center. We don't have to open them both up. By opening up the control center, it will also open up the slave. This is the control center in VizMiner. And it really has three main areas. It has the data set and models area where we uh, can do our work. It also has a pane up here where we can drag things in when we want to do visualizations, look at pictures and tables of our data. You can see that I actually have two monitors hooked up to my computer right here. Uh, had I only had one monitor, only one of these little squares would be visible. It also has a modeler's pane over here. And we, uh, this miner will do many data mining tasks. It just so happens that we are going to only do one data mining task in terms of developing models, and that is going to be use a regression model, which is a specific type of predicting numeric values. When we open up our data, this is the open data set icon. And when we select this, we can go open up our data set. So I have started one off that has uh, not too many variables in it. And, and so if we, one of the things we can do is we can go in and we can look at the data table. So one of the visualizations is to actually see the data table and it shows us the variables that we have and shows you the value of the real records that are in there. And there's over a thousand in this particular case. So there's a lot of records to see. Another nice visualization, another type sort of summary information that it will give you is it will also give you a summary statistics view which will tell you how many different, uh, it will actually will tell you the types of data, whether they're integers, and uh, it also tells you the cardinality, that's how many unique values there are, and if you mouse over it, will actually show you what those are. So for example, in this case, it's showing me that about 50% of the cars have air conditioning and about 50% of them don't. Those that have a value of one have air conditioning. Uh, down here in terms of doors, it shows us that we have certain percentages of cars that have many doors and, and those that don't, and so forth. When we get down to uh, something that's more continuous, then it sort of like breaks it up into sort of like clusters, but it, it gives us some information. So cardinality is how many different values that are in there, uh, and it'll also tell the mean, standard deviation, the min and the max, and so forth. So that's a useful way to be able to go in and sort of see what's more categorical because it has a slight low cardinality and what has more continuous variables because it has a high cardinality.